I can uh, bring you up to. So it's not just limited to those people who can hop on up on the stage. Okay. Well, thanks for those that, that did share and let's go ahead and get started then. We'll move um, as usual with the DeFi and the platform work. Sure. Um, open source stuff as usual. Uh, we're accepting contributions to all these repos. Um, you know, just added the list there, but it's Weblib, Unchained, Fox Farm, HD Wallet, and Cluster Launcher. Uh, as always, the link to the engineering project board where all of these repos are tracked with everything that we're working on. And a reminder that we have the daily stand up at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. I've seen uh, Seth and 420 in there plenty of times now. In terms of bounty work, uh, we've been retroactively paying out bounties for contributions. So even if there are not bounties listed for stuff, um, we have been paying those out on a discretionary basis and there will be more to come on Gitcoin. So if you are considering getting involved, please do. Uh, the work on Lib, uh, Toshi and Ryan are continuing to flush out uh, the swap up, bringing stuff over from platform shared and testing and 420 has been um, adding some stuff to Fox Farm and now is going to be adding stuff to that as well. Um, we had a, a great meeting this week, but I'll let uh, Adam speak to that or Major Hayes later about an overarching kind of cross-chain, cross-device wallet strategy, which is pretty cool. Uh, on the Unchained side of things, uh, Bitcoin support continues and uh, I'll let Willie speak to the pocket network stuff later that we had, a uh, meeting that we had last week, which is potentially very promising um, for a, a way to monetize that. And then on our most deadline, uh, most important deadline thing, Fox Farming V2, uh, web is pretty much code complete as of this morning, and it's in the hands of testing with product and ops. And on the mobile side of things, we've got uh, two people still finishing up tickets there, and we are on track for our deadline to be code complete at the end of this week. And um, we'll be able to do some testing there as well. So everything's coming along nicely. I'll hand it over to who wants to take the coins team. Kev? Uh, sure. I can't speak too closely to the 1559 fees. I know that McChadwick, uh, Mike, and potentially Highlander have been working on that. Mike, if you wanted to hop up and speak more to that, feel free. Um, I'll just read <laughs> what's on the page for now. Keep key on Windows, uh, spiking still happening, and some HD wallet support in progress. Uh, I can speak more to the Unchained side. So last week we were working on deploying Bitcoin to the public cluster that is up and running, and you could hit that now. Uh, so that's great. And then we also were able to deploy our public dev cluster. So as we are adding functionality and merging it into the develop branch, we'll be able to test that more quickly on that dev, those dev endpoints. Um, Mike's been continuing to work on the Bitcoin ingester. Uh, lots of good work happening there. We did deploy the base ingester pipeline last week along with the rest of the Bitcoin stuff to those public clusters. Uh, and now the focus is all of the more Bitcoin specific transaction parsing for like Coinbase's and op return and ultimately packaging that payload up to be sent back to the client. And that's where the last bullet comes into play is WebSockets. We did finally start to spike out some upfront questions on WebSockets and began a proof of concept implementation at the end of last week. And that is the primary focus for myself and Parker this week is to continue building out those web sockets so we could finally get that last missing piece of data getting to the client with this new decentralized uh, client store mentality. So that'll be the focus. Looks like Mike hopped up if you wanna give any more details to those top two. But that's all I got for Unchained. Um, yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, yeah, the only thing I had was the EIP 1559 fees. 
So we did ship that out um, Thursday and Friday. Props to um, Mark and Nick for sticking with that and getting everything working. Um, so users should be saving a little bit of money. Um, and on Etherscan, if you click the details on your transaction, you can uh, you can see whether it was using 1559 or legacy, and you can see they give like an estimate of how much um, fees were saved on that transaction. And then I believe Noah is going to give us an update on KeepKey. Keep. Yeah, things are progressing well there. Um, Mark is working on some stabilizing issues, just so making it so it's a little bit more error tolerant, um, and is also working on a Python executable file. Um, so yeah, hopefully the bridge will be usable for all Windows users. Um, and yeah, everything's progressing. That's all I got. Can probably move on to SREs. Not much extra color to add that hasn't already been said. Uh, general support of the Bitcoin integration with Unchained, uh, addition of the AWS node termination handler for proper cluster negotiation of spot instance termination in AWS, and just general feature development and developer experience improvement overall. Thank you all. Um, Mr. Nerdhair, do you want to come up for a security team update or are you doing a separate stream kickoff and maybe remove this section from here? It's your choice. Uh, which, okay, I updated, I updated a Dow Op Sprint uh, spreadsheet, which means I might be looking at the wrong thing right now. Um, the so our, our major priorities this week include uh, itchy signing policy uh, review and, and recommendations. Uh, hopefully they'll be able to get a proposal up uh, later this week, probably, I guess. Um, we're working on a budget proposal. Uh, I'm looking forward to picking your brain about that, Josh. Uh, and working on our final set of centralized RDP uh, vulnerability fixes and payouts. So uh, uh, that's it for security. Okay, cool. And when you, let's find some time if you wanna pick my brain about the budget proposal and we can talk about where your updates are because maybe you're just updating here and it's already being said other places too. So we, we can chat. Sounds good. Uh, and same with the IT team here with uh, Marley. Maybe this is no longer needs to be in this update. But there's Marley. I don't think that's needed. Yeah. Okay. I have an idea. So on to Adam. Hey, thanks, Josh. Uh, apologies. It looks like I I had updated the old the old sheet from from last week i got my notes here um so yeah as as DeFi mentioned uh we made some great progress on wallet strategy last week uh had some really really good discussions there around sort of unifying our chain adapters and hd wallet interfaces to sort of set us up to integrate a lot of other wallets in the future um, we're going to be following up on that during engineering office hours on Wednesday at three mountain time. Um, yeah, the other big thing on my mind is the, the progress integrating Bitcoin, which has been coming along well. I know we were able to, to do some sends at the end of last week. So yeah, that's about it for me. Cool. Thank you. See, for me this week, I'll be moving the work stream budget proposal to official voting. It uh, looks pretty good in the ideation phase right now. 19 votes in, 18 for, one against. Um, and wallet planning, you've heard plenty about that. Clearly, that's on a lot of people's minds this week. A quick question. Um, 
Adam, I scheduled a, another meeting for wallet planning tomorrow afternoon. I forgot that we had a specific next step, which was to which was to bring it to the engineering office hours on Wednesday. So we can chat. Maybe I cancel that meeting tomorrow afternoon. Maybe I keep it. We don't need to make that decision right now. But just so you know, I'm open to that not needing to happen now that I remember it. Since yeah, you I mean, me. if we've all got time, I'm I'm not opposed to doing it tomorrow as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll keep we'll keep it. And we can decide as it gets closer. Cool. Uh, uh, Adam mentioned just another reminder of engineering office hours Wednesday at three. Again, we do the office hours on the weeks where we don't have demos. There's no demo this week since they're only the first and third Wednesdays of every month. So engineering office hours on Wednesday. I'm still working on treasury diversification, the success token stuff. I see Scott. Scott, I'll be contacting you hopefully today to try to take the next steps there. Um, and then, you know, I've been, or at least over the weekend, I really started, I guess I'm constantly thinking about, but it became very clear to me over the weekend, I was thinking about what, like, what can we do as an engineering team to um do more, but not work more, right? Like not spend more and more hours, but still like be more effective and get more done. And as I was reflecting on that, I was thinking about this, this is my context lesson from last week. And so one of the things is too, that I thought that we can do to just be better at what we do is make sure we have all the context for what we're working on so that we're, Basically, we're not making assumptions that then lead to wasted effort. And that's exactly what happened to me last week. I was working with Nanook on a bug for claiming Fox. And his challenge was, is he couldn't recreate the test condition to be able to claim Fox. So I thought, oh yeah, I can help him with that. And he and I chatted and then I did some database work and I had multiple, you know, I'm, I, I have a lot of meetings. So it was like where I could find time um, and ultimately got to the point. It's like, okay, great. We can now recreate a Nana having, being able to claim Fox from like Fox fuel and Fox back, right? Making database entries so that he can get the claim button can be active and go through all that. I don't know how long it took multiple days, like multiple little sessions with him and then ultimately he responded back with, oh, this is to claim Fox from liquidity mining is where the bug exists, not claiming Fox from Fox fuel and Fox back. So this is just a situation where I made a bunch of assumptions about claiming Fox. He just went right along with my assumptions and we just started working in the claim Fox from Fox fuel, Fox back. And it was the totally the wrong context. So. Basically, we did a lot of work that did not need to be done. That was kind of, well, it was throwaway work. So anyway, my point there is, as we're all going forward, take the time. If I would have taken five minutes even to better understand the context, I wouldn't have spent all that time to recreate a test condition for which we did not need to test. So please make sure you take a little bit of extra time up front, understand your context before you start diving into your work. Um, don't do what I do, do what I say <laughs> that I'm gonna try to do going forward. Um, and I wanna, um, I do wanna like have conversations with people and see what else, like what are some things that we could do where, where we can just be more effective Again, I don't think the answer is to work more hours, but I, I just feel some urgency. I think there's some urgency. I would like to get more done. I mean, who wouldn't want to get more done? But I, I kind of even think it's at the point where it's important that we figure, or at least figure out and be able to answer. If there is nothing else we can do, then at least we talked about it and we know that. And I'd like to be open to the possibility that there's some things that we could change to be able to get more done. So let's just chat about that. All right, with all that, I'm gonna pass it to Bethany. 
Thanks, Josh. Um, cool. Uh, hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Um, I'm just going to go over some of the stuff uh, UX and design is working on right now. Um, for the mobile app, uh, Yasmosis Staking is actually uh, in development. We have uh, the LP and IBC bridge that we're working through right now, and then that will be uh, run through usability. Um, we do plan to make uh, significant progress on that this week. Um, Fox Farming 2.0, that is in development, as you guys know. Uh, and then mobile gem integration, um, I think uh, design work is going to start on that soon. Um, and then for web, um, as you guys know, Beard is still working on the open source. Uh, new web app um, staking the web designs are ready for that. I don't know. I don't think development has been started though. And then again, working through Osmosis, LPing, and the IBC bridge for web um, and Fox Farming 2.0 in development, as you guys know. And then we have a bunch of stuff for .dot com. Uh, we have a sync up uh, with the marketing work stream today to talk about um, the .dot com needs and and the future of the the .dot com website. Um, and that's it for UX and design. I will pass it to, is it Chow or Matt? I think it's Matt Fox. It's me, it's me this week. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, had a great week at Maine at 2021 last week. Great to see some familiar faces after not being able to go to a conference for a couple of years uh, due to COVID. Um, and also some new faces. It's crazy how uh, big these conferences are getting and more diverse. Uh, product priorities this week. We want to make sure we're getting the second round of liquidity mining on mobile dev done. By the end of this week, uh, we need to be able to hit those dates, knowing that the end of the first uh, mining is coming fast approaching in about two weeks. Uh, for some DAO stuff, it's going to be Fox Farming V2 testing. I know Chow and Fox McLeod are going to be taking the lead on that. And also starting to talk about uh, Liquifier, getting it open source to prep for Yearn. Really excited to get that integration going. Uh, I heard a great talk at Mainnet from uh, the head of Yearn. Uh, it was really, really interesting about regulators coming into the space and his view on them. Um, also, Thorchain, yay, we're getting it turned back on. We get some UTXOs uh, that we can probably potentially turn on this week. BNB and Beesh are on right now. Uh, we're hoping that they get Bitcoin, Litecoin, and ETH turned on by the end of the week. So that is super exciting as well. Um, and then we're going to be trying to get a, a mobile app store submission uh, in by the end of the week which I'm also really excited about. And then Josh, one miscellaneous thing. Let me know if you have a few minutes to sync up after this. A few things I want to chat with you about now that I am back in full action this week. And if no one has any questions, I'll pass it over to Willie for any type of DAO updates. What's up, everybody? GM, thanks, Matt. Um, I mean, DAO updates, there's so much going on. Um, we did a, a great little update in the... DAO op sprint this morning. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're fully down it. Props to all of you guys. We are building the DAO while flying it. There's a number of uh, proposals. There's over 10 proposals right now in the ideation stage. So expecting to see a lot of proposals advancing to uh, the proposal stage soon. Something I'm really excited about are uh, these, there's three affiliate revenue uh, opportunities um, in the proposal uh, ideation right now. Uh, this is awesome. These are opportunities where Shapeshift users can access these protocols that um, include uh, things like fiat on an off-ramp and uh, going long or short on a variety of assets on per protocol um, with leverage, um, as well as uh, the YAT opportunity. So two of those are really things particularly that a lot of that are very common use cases for users and really excited about the potential for Shapeshift to be the best way to use these things because it won't cost them any more than if they were to go directly to per protocol or directly to on Juno. Um, but uh, every time a user makes a purchase, it'll generate uh, affiliate revenues for the DAO. Really excited to start getting some affiliate revenues and diversify the, the treasury that way. And uh, yeah, excited. If, uh, something that will be an option for us is to incentivize uh, these activities with Fox. And if we do that, we can actually be objectively the best way to use these protocols, You know, even better than going directly to per protocols interface. So really excited about that. Also exciting to just to see these uh, partnering DAOs, these other projects have, being so interested in a Shapeshift integration to the point where Perp has, uh, they just had a proposal passed to uh, sponsor a bounty for integration for $100,000 of Perp tokens. And the app proposal includes a bounty for integration for 50,000 yet. 
So it's really amazing to see uh, other projects coming in, putting the work in to make this proposal and offering to incentivize the integration with their tokens and giving us the affiliate uh, affiliate revenue deal. Um, just really happy to see this because things are, are playing out, couldn't be playing out much better uh, for us only being about two months into this. So yeah, and also just wanna thank everyone for the patience as we still uh, get a lot of the foundation for this DAO in place and uh, you know improve our processes. We're still very much in this transition phase. Um, so it's, it's in progress, but I just wanna thank everybody for uh, their patience, their flexibility, their open-mindedness and just, you know, coordinating. We're, we are dowing it and uh, there's not a lot of guidance out there on how to doubt well. So we are pioneering here and uh, couldn't be happier with how things are going so far. James, did you want me to uh, chat about the pocket network thing? Please have, if you'd like to add a little bit of color about how that partnership could potentially work and what it could mean front end. Awesome. Yeah, we had a uh, call with Pocket Network this past week. They are basically building like decentralized backend infrastructure for multiple blockchains. So kind of like graph protocol type thing, um, but really just focused on blockchain data. Um, as you guys have, you may have heard, this is a you know a problem that we someone will need to solve, right? It's, it's actually I think it's going to be a critical piece of infrastructure in the future, just decentralized backend. Right now, a lot of quote unquote DApps just depend on Infura, which is which is centralized, and we can't really call ourselves decentralized. We can't really ever achieve this full decentralized future that we all envision without this critical piece of infrastructure. And right now, it's not uh, at the point it's uh, where this infrastructure exists, this protocol just exists that we can tap into. Um, but Pocket Network is working on it. It's one of the projects that is, they have a very, they have a vision to solve this exact problem. And uh, they're in the early stages of solving it. I think it's live right now for, for some chains. So we could, we could play around with using Pocket Network to get blockchain data uh, in a decentralized way for some blockchains. And right now we're just in the early, early stages. The engineering um, work stream is researching the different potential solutions for this. Before we had heard about Pocket Network, we were kind of thinking that we would have to solve this problem ourselves. And um, Engineering Workstream was getting pretty excited about brainstorming what this could look like and how Fox could be the utility token that basically runs this network and makes this network possible. Um, but we're still figuring that out. Um, so still in the early stages of deciding, is this a problem that we need to solve ourselves uh, or that we should solve ourselves? And doing the cost benefit analysis to then say, okay, well, if, if Pocket's already focused on this, maybe we should instead just work with them to solve this, this problem. And uh, while it would be great for Fox Token to be the, the core asset, um, it does seem like Pocket Network's at an early enough stage where that's not off the table. So potentially Fox could still be working in their system. If, that's, if that doesn't end up being uh, feasible or optimal, then uh, I think something else we could consider is just like a token swap with Pocket Network so that if they do succeed, um, then the Shapeshift Treasury still gets the benefits of that. But yeah, just wanted to let everyone know we're, we are having these conversations. Um, they're going, the uh, Pocket Network is looking promising so far, but we're still in an early stage where we have not yet decided what the best route for implementation is. Um, but uh, if uh, we do continue chatting with them, I expect we'd likely set up a community call so that you guys could all get a deep dive in and ask some questions. Thank you, sir. You bet. All right. And that was a fast 30 minutes. Are there any questions or comments from anybody about any of this? Any new information, anything I missed that anybody wants to update on? Okay, everybody. Well, thanks for joining. I hope everyone has a great week. We'll definitely see you around the server and in the voice channels.